And we're back at Poppy Gamer Connects 2018 in London. I am joined by JJ of Mythical City Games, and you're here to talk to me about VR, aren't you? That's right. So we are a Vancouver-based VR game development studio, and we focus on creating high-end, immersive, but also very intuitive VR experiences. Gotcha. So when we were discussing things beforehand, you mentioned the idea is you're aiming it at people who maybe aren't familiar with VR or perhaps haven't used it before, and so you're designing it to be as accessible as possible. How do you go about doing that, making it easy for the first-time user? Sure. Yeah, so we definitely want to bring people into VR as much as possible. So we want to make the experience as intuitive and as easy as possible. So somebody that can pick it up for the first time understands the game very quickly. Uh, so some of the techniques we'd use to do that is limiting the amount of inputs they have. So how many buttons they have to press, how many complex controls there are. Um, in VR, you can move very naturally and use your body. So that's something we want to encourage people to do, is learn the fact that you can actually use your body to interact with the environment, move around the environment, um, and then that way it becomes something that's an easy, intuitive experience for anybody. They don't have to have any game experience. Um, they don't have to be gamers. They can, as long as they know how to pick something up in real life, they can pick it up in VR as well. Um, so that's the kind of thing we try to focus on so that, uh, so that our games are very good first-time VR user experiences. Uh, but also do offer depth for people that uh, get into it and want to keep playing more. So what do you think is the biggest hurdle that you've seen people come across when they first pick it up? We've obviously seen a lot of people playing downstairs at the moment using VR. When you give it to someone who's never experienced it before, what's the mistake they make? What's the hardest thing to get their head around and therefore the toughest thing that you need to adapt to when you're designing? Sure. So. Um, the first thing that people do is, if it's their first experience, is they, they need a little bit of time to adjust and to let the experience sink in. Um, so sometimes if you throw them into doing things right away or get them to take actions too early before they've had a chance to sort of adapt to it, they might miss what you're trying to show them. So they need a little like acclimatization period. Yeah, and it's, it's not as much as um, sort of acclimatizing because of any kind of negative factor. It's more because they're so wowed by uh, the novelty of the experience at first, or th they're taking in the environment, that they may not be paying attention to anything else yet. They may not be ready to pay attention. So we want to first let them uh, just take a look around and absorb the environment, give them some time to sort of look around and just adjust that way. And what's the best type of game? I mean, you've released a number of games over the past couple of years uh, in the VR space. What would be the game that you'd point to and say, this is the ideal one for the first timer, and, and how does it work? What is it, what is it about? Sure, so uh, one of our first VR games is called Snow Fortress, and that is a snowball throwing and snow fort building game. So it's a very perfect Canadian-made title. Sure. Um, but it's also a very good first time experience. Uh, because it doesn't require a lot of complex buttons, there's really two main interactions in it, with it. So as long as you understand two buttons on the controllers, it's very simple. Um, the type of interactions in it are also very easy. So it's a, it revolves around throwing snowballs. So that's something everybody's familiar with, uh, or throwing. Um, and then building a fort, you pick up blocks and uh, build a fort in front of you. And so that's something that's very easy for people to get into. And they don't need a lot of instruction. Um, usually we don't even have to tell them what to do if we're doing a demo. We can just let them figure it out on their own, or we have a little fox that explains it to you too if you get stuck. Okay, the tutorial fox. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> All right then. So I guess that's a fairly easy one-to-one -one thing to understand, as in people will just start doing that yes. of their own accord, I guess. When it starts getting to the slightly more esoteric control systems, like what's the trickiest stuff you've, you've encountered having to implement? Because I know that combating nausea is a big issue with VR that people have done, so rather than wandering around, people tend to teleport from place to place to avoid that kind of motion sickness you get from your body being still, but you suddenly, your eyes drifting away yes. that way. Like, What's the, the trickiest things you've had to try and overcome in that regard? Sure, so um, probably more so on the user interface side is things that we've encountered that are very difficult because there's no examples of how it's been done yet. Um, so with the motion and mo locomotion stuff, there's already a lot of good examples out there um, and a lot of good techniques you can refer to. But on the user interface stuff, for games that have more complex data, so for example, we made a city building game in VR called Skytropolis, and a city building game typically has a lot of complex UI elements. You have a list of different things you can build, you have to have all kinds of budget panels and information for the player about how they're doing, how their city's doing. 
And so that information is very difficult to convey in VR in an intuitive and immersive way. That isn't just floating screens. Yeah, yeah. exactly, it's just not floating somewhere. So um, one of the approaches we used for Skytropolis to be able to show you what you can build is we took a uh, panel of cards, sort of like a deck of cards in front of you. Something people are very used to that concept. And you, when you want to pick what you want to build, this deck of cards shows up in your left hand, and with your right hand you just pick the card you want to build. And this is a good way to show a lot of data, um, but also make it very intuitive for somebody to just look through it and be able to pick something with that. It's that it's, I think the word is heuristic, right? Where the reality, yes. it represents reality. So yes. the way the App Store was originally designed, where the bookshop was literally a bookshelf yes. with books on it. So yeah, I guess it plays into that idea of something people are already familiar with. Yeah, absolutely. So what are you working on this year? What's the thing that you're pushing towards in 2018? Sure, so we want to try to get more and more into VR uh, and focus on new kinds of experiences. Uh, so we want to try to focus more on multiplayer aspects. Okay. We've done a little bit of multiplayer, so Snow Fortress had a multiplayer component to it, but it was more of just us exploring the space. Uh, we've noticed that a lot of the successful VR titles are incorporating multiplayer, and a lot of the players are asking for that. They want those kind of PC or mobile type of multiplayer experiences in VR. Uh, so we want to explore that space a little bit more. We've got four games that we want to develop this year. Uh, one is a sequel to one of our previous games, uh, and then the next three are all new experiences that have more of multiplayer tie-ins. So some of them are online multiplayer, and some of them have more local multiplayer, where you and I could both play with one VR headset. So I would be in VR and you'd be on the computer screen. That's gotcha. sort of a, a, a asynchronous or asymmetric gameplay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've seen some of those being demoed again downstairs. We see, see a bunch of them. So why do you come to a conference like this? If you're, if this is not your first time or is this your first time at PGC full stop? Uh, in London, this is the first time, but in Vancouver, we've gone to, to Vancouver, yeah. yeah, PG Connects there. So what's the benefit from your end? If you're a developer and you're out here, are you looking to, is it publishers you're looking for? Is, who are you looking to talk to? The biggest thing is networking uh, with the industry, and the fact that this conference has an XR Connect component to it is really great. Um, and being able to take in some of the talks that are going on and meet other people in the industry and also to take part in the uh, indie pitch that's happening for uh, ah, VR okay. specifically. So which game are you entering? So we're entering our racing game, it's called Dispatch, and okay. this is our multiplayer, local multiplayer VR game. Excellent, well I'll be over there a little bit later, so I look forward to seeing it in action. Awesome, thank Plenty you. Thank you for talking to me today. Thank you.